What's good, everybody, and welcome to Chaos Clips. This is my second YouTube channel. If you have not seen it before, this is basically just gameplays that I find exciting, fun, competitive. It's usually taken from my Twitch. It's just going to be less edited videos usually. So if you have not seen it before, maybe if you watched the video and you didn't subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Maybe even turn on the notification bell and hit the like button for me if you enjoy it because it really helps me out. For today's video, it's not going to be a gameplay though. It's going to be my beta review. If you haven't seen these past week, this past week for like three and a half days or so, the beta came out. We were able to play it a lot. I definitely spent a lot of time on it. Was able to learn a few things, but basically, basically what I was able to find was different uh, either things that I didn't like or things that I did like about the game. So that's what I'm be going over for you. In this course, we have about a month and a half into the real game comes out. So I'm just gonna be going over things that I think need to stay the same and things that need to change it. And, it, and honestly, my opinion isn't the same as everyone else's, to be honest with you. I feel like I have a little bit different of opinion from at least what I've been seeing from other competitive Madden players, other YouTubers, streamers, things like that. So it's gonna be exciting. I'll have a list for you guys over here just so you guys can, you can go through it, see, see the words you don't have to just listen to me talk the entire time there's something for you to look at my face cam will be on there too but it's going to give you guys a basis for everything that i think need to change and everything i think needs to stay the same so looking over at this list here i have the changes that i feel like going from now up through august i think need to be tweaked or changed in some sort of way so first we have sliding giving yourself up i feel like the way that it was in the game you could slide if you were on balance but it's actually a ball carry move now the things have changed the button combination has changed. So now when you're on conservative, you had trouble giving yourself up. And now that's usually not a problem if you're a running back or receiver. But for a quarterback, you want to still be able to give yourself up. You don't want to take that hit. You still have a risk of fumbling. So I feel like it just needs to be tweaked a little bit, giving us a way to be able to do it on conservative and maybe even change the combination back. I had a little bit of trouble working with the new mechanics. It's changed. As you guys saw, the celebration changed. That now became the left trigger. So now that that's the celebration for the left trigger, that used to be where you slide a left trigger and X. So now that that's gone, I feel like you kind of, you kind of need to tweak it a little bit. We'll see I, at least be able to uh, slide on conservative, but maybe a little bit of tweaking there for the second one. We have click on control, click on control. I felt like when you clicked onto your corners or your safeties or even your linebackers, you couldn't pull them the way you used them. You couldn't use pass in Madden 20. If you threw a pass, like a 30 yard pass or say you could grab that player, move them into the right position, try to make a play on the football. This year, I felt like you really couldn't. You were kind of stuck in the mud, at least for the beginning of the pass. And that's, that's, it's okay. But in combination with, I felt like the zones reacted a little bit slower. When you add those two together, it becomes a little bit tough. Now, I'll get over to the same thing saying the same soon. But I don't really want to change the zones too much, but I'll cover that here in a second. The click on control, I just felt like you needed a little bit more on defense and on offense and on offense. But mostly on defense, if it, clicking on the receivers, you couldn't move them quite as much this year. If you guys saw, like at least me play and other players play, you could click on your receivers and swerve them. You swerve flats, you swerve streaks, get them in a better position to catch the ball. This year for at least the beta, that was almost non-existent. There were some times where you could, but it wasn't a ton. It wasn't like years past. So you couldn't get your players in the right position to catch the ball. So I do think they maybe could increase that some, but you can't increase that unless you increase the defensive control too. You need to be able to control both. If you can't do the defense, I don't want you to be able to do the offense either. So blitzing, blitzing, I felt like was a little bit tough with the angles of the blitzing. I felt like players will oftentimes maybe take the wrong angle, um, but not too much on that. I just felt like blitzing was a little bit difficult. But that just could be a bad, bad feedback for me because it's early in the year. Blitzes don't aren't found the first couple of days. They might be found early on in the year and we just didn't find them in three and a half days to just kind of test out how the blitzing worked. So that might not be good feedback. That's just something that I noted for the three and a half days. We'll see how that goes. I don't want them to mess with that too much. Just maybe look into it some. Pressure and accurate and throw out a sack. So I felt like these can cause a little bit of issues because it's almost like we can, it's hard for us to gauge when we're going to get a throw out a sack and when the QB is going to hold it and just get sacked. It's hard for us to tell how close is the defender that it's going to trigger a pressure and accurate. I can't really tell, especially because I'm looking downfield on my receivers. I don't really know how close the defender is to me unless he's hitting me. So that's something to keep in mind as well. It, it becomes tough to really judge and it can cause some bad passes. It can cause interceptions. And, and that's, and that's pretty difficult to deal with a lot. Of, oftentimes I like to throw out a sack when it just goes straight into the ground or like at the bottom of your lineman's feet. It's just an incompletion. I like that. That's positive for the offense. That's great for me. But when it causes an interception, that becomes a little bit tough to deal with. So that's just my opinion on that weak box versus new audible. So, 
the new audible if you haven't seen you can change the personnel right so normally you have a three wide receiver set one running back one tight end you can sub in a tight end put him at wide receiver now you have two tight ends two wide receivers and one running back you can audible the whole set of new formations you can go to like something like deuce close from a three wide receiver set if you put a running back in for a receiver which you can do in madden 20 now you'll have a two running back two wide receiver one tight end set now you can go to something like i form close where you have the tight end on the line, two wide receivers, two running backs, because the running back counts as a fullback. Now, that's cool. That gives you creativity. I like that. The issue is sometimes if you go from bunch or like trips tight end down to I form close, if someone came out in dollar to stop your uh, your bunch, and that's a weaker set, they add them down to I close, now you get weak box, and your players react a little bit slower to the run, and that becomes tough to stop. Now, that's fine, because you can see that they're coming out with a different personnel, but the issue is I felt like running backs actually played really well as wide receivers. So when you audible down to those lower sets, it, you still got weak box. But when you're in the, the, in the passing set, the running back played well, well enough just as a receiver that it didn't hurt you to put the running back in. So I feel like most people will put in the running back as a receiver and then they have those audibles extra and they don't hurt their passing game whatsoever. I feel like either you could tweak it so it has to be a fullback, not a running back to go to those I-form sets or... You could just tweak it so running backs are not great receivers. So it hurts them in their passing game if they want to do that. And then you feel maybe a little bit more comfortable going to a 3-4, a nickel, anything like that. So that's my that's my that's all my changes. That's my five. I'm gonna keep them to five and five. Now we're gonna go over to the things that I feel like were positives about the game, and I want to stay the same. Now looking over the things that I liked usering. Now I've seen a lot of people disagree with me on this. So I this is not just the generic feedback that everyone's saying. Usering, I liked it. In years past, I always felt like if you're out of position, you can be a few yards behind a drag. If you're the same speed, so you're both 99, just use a generic number, you're both 99 speed. I'm the user, I'm three yards behind your drag. I should not be able to catch up to you. That drag should be a completion. But in years past, I felt like you could undercut the ball. You could run faster than the receiver. They're not running their route at 99 speed. You're running 99 speed. You could undercut it, catch up. Same thing with a post, whatever the case may be, you can make up the ground. I think if you're out of position, you should be getting up in completion pretty much every single time. So in this matter, at least in the beta, if you were out of position and you didn't have an adjustment to stop a pass, you were going to give up a completion. And that that just went every single time pretty much. If they made the read, they were getting completion. So I think it creates a little bit of a skill gap if you have to put certain zones out there and then you know your responsibility. So if I know, all right, I'm in this yellow. I don't have a hard flat here. Maybe I have to go lurk the running back because I know if the running back goes out on the flat, he'll be open. And then if there's a drag going across the middle and there's no yellow zone, I'm the yellow zone. I need to be there to stop that. That, that, that for me creates a skill up to know your responsibility. And if you don't know that responsibility, if you go lurking somewhere else and you left the flat open, you're not going to be able to catch up to it. So that's what I like about the usering. Now QB releases and rack catch. I'm going to do these two together. They help negate any heavy blitzing meta that we've seen. So Madden 20, we're sending seven people. We're sending eight people. I'm getting out of, I'm getting out of breath, but we're not cutting it. We, I'm getting a little out of breath. Um, if you're sending seven or eight people, and then you have three deep blues, they're going to play the flat. They're going to play the drag. You're not going to be able to steer your defender up the field. You're not going to get a great rack catch. You're probably going to get a couple yards. Two, three. In Madden 21 beta, if you try to play defense like that with three deep blues and seven people getting blitzed, if you threw a running back table route, you're getting 15 yards. If you threw a flat, a smoke screen, a hitch, a drag, you are getting 10 to 15 yards and you had a chance for a lot more because you're going to get good blocking and you're going to be able to get up the field and make people miss. And I love that. I don't ever, I don't like, I don't like that meta. I don't enjoy playing that meta. And that, and the QB releases was the other thing. If a guy comes in, you don't have to get, you don't get inaccurate quick throws. You can throw as quick as you want. And they're going to get the ball out quick. The release was fast. You hit that drag, you're out. You're going to go get a lot of yards. And I love that. And I had so much fun playing against that. Because you have to mix in coverage. You can't just blitz every down and expect your deep blues to react. And I, I'm a big fan of that. So that was good for me. Zone drop yard increments was great. If you didn't see already, you can change your flats. Hard flats, curl flats, cloud flats, soft squats. They're in two categories. So curl flats and then soft squats, clouds, and hards are all in the same one. You can leave them default the way they would be in like Madden 20. You can go 0, 5, 10, all the way up to 35 yard increment, increments. So that was great. That stops your crossers, your deep corner routes, the posts that go all the way across the field and win. 
that stops all that stuff. If you want to stop those from getting open every single time, you can change those increments. Now, one small change would be not to include the hard flats because I feel like if the hard flat, the hard flat should play shallow no matter what, in my opinion, then just clouds and soft spots, you can have them drop as far as you want. That's just one small change, but regardless, I love the change. It was a great implementation. It's going to stop those, those plays like the AY shot, like the AY shot. You can't, the, the cross are going to be open every time. If they have a 25 yard purple out there, it's probably not going to get open. The 30 yard purple is not going to get open. So that's a great change for me. I love it. It's going to create more creativity on offense. You're going to have to take your drag. You're going to have to take your slant sometimes. And it, I like that. It's a good change. The last thing was zone reaction time. This is another one where I feel like most people that I see did not agree with me. The zones didn't react that fast. Now, I think if you do the change that I said about the click ons, I think the zones play fine. I don't want them to be that great. That's kind of the part of the reason why the, the blitzing meta was happening in Madden 20. Because the, the, the deep blues reacted so fast to the flat and you didn't get a great rack on it that you weren't getting that many yards. But this year, the deep blues don't react fast enough that if you get a flat, you'll get 10 yards. You're moving the chain. So I was a big fan of that. I don't think it needs to be tweaked too much. Now, if you don't tweak user control, like clicking on and moving them yourself, maybe tweak it a little bit. And even if you do tweak the user control, maybe tweak it some, it can react a little bit faster, but I would much rather stay this way than go the opposite and go like to Madden 20 speed. So if you can tweak it a little bit, that's cool. I do not want to see too much from it because I don't want it to get out of control. And that's just my opinion. Those are the five things that I thought were uh, keep things that I wanted to stay the same. I enjoyed the beta. If I was giving it an overall rating, it would probably be around um, an eight. I would say maybe an eight and, uh, and it had potential for more. I loved it. I had fun playing it. I played it a lot. I enjoy playing my friends on it. And I think if it stays, if, if, they, if they fix the small things, don't change it too much. It could be a fun year for us. Now, keep in mind, most of the stuff's about passing the ball. I didn't play a lot of runners. I don't run the ball a lot, so I don't have a ton for you. I will tell you inside zone or like the, the inside runs, inside zone dive, stuff like that was pretty good. They, they felt like there was decent blocking, but I don't have a ton for you on that. Those are just my five changes, my five keeps. I hope you all enjoyed. Again, if you aren't subscribed to the second channel, but you're subscribed on the first one, this might be content you enjoy. So if you do, like, comment, subscribe. Take it easy. Peace.